Hello everybody, this is John Murray. Today I'd like to take a look at Hermes Emerald Tablet and explain to you how it may be outpictured in the Egyptian primordial waters image. I'd like to go over it line by line to explain what I think all of it may mean. And I want to thank ancient architects for their recent illuminating video on the Emerald Tablets, which I highly recommend you watch. Allow me to remind you of my first video in this series, wherein I point out a possible explanation of the picture of the primordial waters as being a rendition of the electromagnetic forces operating inside of the earth, which are fed by the sun through the waters and through the air, and of how the pyramids then drew this electromagnetic energy up into the atmosphere and out of the earth for their daily energy uses of the ancients. In this light, let's take another look at how the primordial waters image is likely an electromagnetic diagram of the words on the emerald tablet. It is only logical to think that the ancients who created the primordial waters image were well versed in the science also taught by Hermes. So let's look at the first line as we wend our way to Hermes' inevitable conclusion at the end. The first line reads, truly without deceit, certain and veritable. This may simply say that the physical laws Hermes describes herein are absolute. Hermes continues, That which is below corresponds to that which is above, and that which is above corresponds to that which is below. This line likely has dual meanings. First, as electromagnetic energy permeates the celestial sky, so does it permeate the earth. Second, the same absolute laws that apply in our dimension, our vibration of being, apply in the higher, subtler dimensions which we cannot see. Hermes then says, To accomplish the miracles of the one thing, and just as all things come from this one thing. So exactly what does the one thing refer to? Is Hermes possibly referring to electromagnetic energy, which is all-pervasive in all of the universe? To examine this, first let's take a short side trip. Keep in mind that science of today does not actually know what gravity is, and there are some scientists who believe it doesn't really even exist. New York Times published an article on July 12, 2010, which read, A Scientist Takes on Gravity. Eric Verlin, 48, a respected string theorist and professor of physics at the University of Amsterdam, whose contention that gravity is indeed an illusion, has caused a continuous ruckus among physicists, or at least among those who profess to understand it. Reversing the logic of 300 years of science, he argued in a recent paper titled On the Origin of Gravity and the Laws of Newton. The next of Hermes' line reads, through the meditation of the one mind. Here, I think the emphasis should be on the word the. Hermes was likely referring to the one mind as his perception of the one God, or the force, if you will, of the universe. The, the singular, creative, omnipresent intellect who created the universe through his or her meditation upon it. Hermes likely did not see our Creator in modern terms, but rather as an omniscient, omnipresent, energetic consciousness. Hermes further says, Its father is the sun. The sun generates electromagnetic energy into the earth and into space. It is the father of such all-pervasive universal energy. Hermes says, Its mother is the moon. Let's take another short side trip here now and look at this article from Sky at Night magazine, March 31, 2016, titled, Is the Moon Maintaining Earth Magnetism? It has long been known that the moon contributes to the effect of tides on Earth, but a new study suggests it could be the missing link in the generation of our planet's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field is produced by the geodynamo, the motion of liquid iron alloy in its outer core. The classical model of how this occurs requires Earth to have cooled by about 3,000 degrees. But recent computer models and geochemical studies of the Earth do not support this theory. There must be a missing source of energy contributing to the maintenance of the Earth's magnetic field, the article says. Researchers from the National Center for Scientific Research have suggested that the Moon could be this missing energy source. 
Tidal effects caused by the moon deform Earth's mantle, and it is this effect that could be stimulating the motion of liquid iron alloy making up the planet's outer core. This would generate and maintain Earth's magnetic field. 3,700 billion watts of power in total is generated by gravity and rotation as Earth and the Moon move around the Sun, and over 1,000 billion watts is thought to be available to cause this motion of liquid in the outer core. Including the Moon in this model solves the classical paradox, according to the researchers. Hermes then goes on. The wind carries it on its belly. Hermes liked to speak in code. Of course, most would take this as meaning the wind we feel on our faces daily. But perhaps what Hermes was referring to was the solar wind carrying electromagnetic energy on its belly. The solar wind carries electromagnetic energy on the sun's belly, that is, on its corona or on its surface. Hermes further says, it's the nurse is the earth. Let's take another look at the primordial waters image. In my first two videos in this series, I described how the image reflects the dynamics of electromagnetic energy being nursed, quote-unquote, by the Earth, to paraphrase myself. Inside the Earth, the sun's energy is multiplied. Hermes says, It is the origin of all, the consecration of the universe. Its inherent strength is perfected if it is turned into Earth. I do not believe, as Newton and so many others of his time did, that this refers to chemical formulas for making the mythical philosopher's stone. I think they all read and saw what they wanted to see for that time when such pursuits were so fanciful. But this was likely an erroneous literal interpretation of the words of a man who was anything but Hermes speaking in code, not literally in the Emerald Tablet. Rather, this is likely referring to the creative electromagnetic forces of the universe which Hermes understood so clearly, going into the earth, not changing into earth, but going into the earth, traversing from the sun into going inside of our earth where they are nursed and multiplied. Hermes continues, separate the earth from heaven, the subtle from the gross. This probably refers to separating the subtle electromagnetic energies out of the gross earth where they are nursed and harnessing them for energy usage. Hermes further says, Gently and with great ingenuity it rises from earth to heaven and descends again to earth, thereby combining within it the power of both the above and the below. If we look again at the primordial water's image, we see this cyclic action described by Hermes, represented by the dots representing the electromagnetic energy, representing the flow of the electromagnetic energy, below and above as it cycles, below and above, inside the earth, and up above the earth. It's all explained in my first two videos in this series. There does seem to be some synchronicity in my videos. So Hermes continues, Thus you will obtain the glory of the whole universe. All obscurity will be clear to you. This is the greatest force of all powers. Looking at the image of the primordial waters, and referencing back to my second video in this series, I explain how I think the rising sacred fire or kundalini energy in the priests and priestesses of the ancients is just another form of this electromagnetic energy. And as a side note, please never try to raise or play this energy. It's extremely dangerous. To continue, this image thus probably also refers to personal mastery, such as that all, universe secret, all universal secrets become clear to you. That's why this concept of personal mastery and electromagnetic force is all mixed together, both in the primordial waters image and here in the emerald tablets of Hermes. They saw this as one. They understood it clearly. Hermes then says, because it overcomes every subtle thing and penetrates every solid thing. Does this refer to the fact that electromagnetic energy penetrates solid matter? In this way was the universe created, Hermes said. From this will come many wondrous applications, because this is the pattern. Electromagnetic energy is the pattern of creation at both the subatomic level and at the physical levels of our universe. Electromagnetic forces bind and create the universe, as above, so below. In this sense, think not of its pattern as something you might see on a sewing machine pattern, but as something that is the literal 
building block of the universe. Hermes continues, Therefore, I am called thrice great Hermes, having all three parts of the wisdom of the whole universe. Modern science teaches us there are four forces in the universe, gravity, electromagnetic force, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force. But if, as I explained above, gravity possibly does not exist, this then leaves just three forces of the universe. Thus Hermes is thrice Hermes. Thus Hermes has outlined all three parts of the wisdom, the wisdom that is operational forces of the universe. And then we come to the kicker conclusion of Hermes, where he couldn't be more obvious about what he has been talking about. For those who have taken a basic English writing course, you know that the last line condenses the purpose of the entire essay. It concludes it. And thus Hermes concludes, Herein have I completely explained the operation of the sun. Herein have I completely explained the operation of the sun. So is the emerald tablet a discourse on harnessing the power of the sun? of its electromagnetic operation explained, as outpictured in the primordial waters image, an image likely made by the same group of enlightened men who stood alongside of Hermes circa 10,500 BC and built the Giza Plateau with him. Whomever drew the primordial image probably knew Hermes. Hermes wasn't a god. He was a man, just like you and me but apparently with vast understanding of cosmic law, of the one law, of the one divine being, the one creator meditative mind, the glory of the whole universe, progenitor of the creative, for of the creative force he or she used to model the universe, to enable the building of the pyramids and to breathe life into our beings as Hermes saw it. And that force used was, of course, electromagnetism. You might see electromagnetism as the one creator's will precipitated into matter. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like my video. I'll get to part four of this series over time between other videos, and I still need to get to part two of explaining what I believe the recently dug up structures at Hatnub, Egypt, really probably were.